All right, welcome back in, everybody. We are Sports Day, Jacob Sports YouTube Network, along with Derek Gunn, Barrett Brooks. I am Rob Ellis, thrilled to speak to our next guest. He is a Pro Football Hall of Famer, was honored this week, uh, and what a, is a great honor, uh, the Otho Davis dinner. I uh, got the Dick Vermeil Award, the one and only Ray Didinger. Ray, how are we, my friend? Hello, fellas. How are you? What's Ray, going on, congrats Ray? on the award, man. That that's uh, that's awesome, man. That, that must have been quite an honor. Miss yeah, you, Ray. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it, it was uh, really great. Uh, you know, to receive an award with Dick Vermeil's name on it, that's pretty good. And uh, uh, it was a great night. Uh, we were also honoring Dick, obviously, this um, for his going into the Pro Football Hall of Fame this year. That was pretty great. And so a whole bunch of his guys came back for the event. So I saw some people I hadn't seen in a really long time, like John Shara came back and flew all the way in from California for it. And, you know, John Spagnola was there. And of course, Ron Jaworski was there and Harold Carmichael. And uh, it was just a, a real, real fun evening. And, um, you know, to have Dick get up and introduce me and say some, uh, really nice things about uh, about me and my career. That was pretty meaningful. Ray, I think you're more visible now than you were before you retired. <laughs> um, and, and so I say that because I'm like, for a man who's retired, will he ever go into hiding and just get away from everything at some point in his life? Well, um, that was sort of the plan. Um, <laughs> but then he has guys like me, guys like me, calling him up and begging him to come on the show, and and, and plans change, right? It, yeah, it kind of it kind of has. Um, one thing I have learned in uh, retirement, such as it is, uh, is that everybody in the world has a podcast. Uh, yep. I have no idea, uh, and I have gotten. I think everybody that has a podcast has called me uh, and asked if I would come on. And I, okay, fine. Um, and um, I'm still on far, far too many Rolodexes in sports talk radio around the country. <laughs> great, no. great. Tell Maria I, I won't call any more this year. No, believe me, you're welcome. <laughs> you, guys, you guys are fine anytime. But um, but I think part of, I think part of it really is just the kind of crazy uh, fall it's been. You know, I mean, who saw the Phillies going to the World Series? Really. Yeah. You know, and who figured the Eagles would be the last unbeaten, you know? So, I mean, that whole red October run, um, people around the country, sports talk station said, hey, we got to get somebody on from Philly. Yeah. And so they were all calling me, didn't know I was retired, but I'm still got the same number. Uh, so they called, brought me on to talk about what's going on in Philadelphia. So on the one hand, it isn't exactly the retirement that I envisioned. But on the other hand, I mean, who doesn't enjoy talking about what's been happening in our city for the last six true. weeks? Great that's point. True. That's, that's a great the major point. thing right there. You know that. I mean, we're we're kind of go through going through a golden age right now that may just last a year, but I'm good with this year where we have going on. But you know, just looking at the birds and 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 the loss they had this week. Um, where are you, where are you at with the loss? You know, where, where do you stand with the loss? Uh. You know, I don't know. I don't know how many people were really buying into the idea of the perfect season. I wasn't. I mean, I didn't. At the start of the year, I certainly didn't. wasn't thinking seventeen and zero. Uh, and even at eight and zero, I wasn't thinking seventeen and zero. It just, to me, it was just a bridge too far. Uh, so the fact that they were going to lose a game, okay, I figured it was going to come along. Um, I was a, I was a little disappointed in what I saw Monday night. Um, I think for the first time this year, they gave a game away, which, yep. Um, yep. you know, which, you know, up until now, um, I mean, they haven't been sensational or dominant in a lot of their games, but they've always been very good about not making mistakes that lose games. And Monday night they did, you know, uh, but even having said that, I mean, everybody's focusing on the fact that you know, Washington was able to run the ball and control the ball at 40 minutes time of possession, blah, 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 which is all true. Um, but still, I mean, if you don't turn the ball over twice in the fourth quarter, you still win that game, right? I mean, time of, for time of possession and all that stuff, notwithstanding, if you don't turn the ball over twice in the last seven minutes, you're still going to win that game. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's where they were. And, um, uh, okay. That one got away from them. Um, you know, I, I know that, um, you know, Michael brought up the uh, Barrett. You were on the show, post game show, uh, and Michael's father in law called in <laughs> with the stat saying 
you know, this was only the second game that they played in 28 days. Yeah. Uh, and uh, did that have anything to do with the fact that they seemed absolutely sloppy? And I know, um, you know, I know Ruben and Jaws kind of dismissed it as, no, you can't. I'm not. I, I think it might have had something to do with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it's it's it, the, the way the NFL works today. Um, it used to be, I mean, those of us of a certain age remember when it used to be that the NFL was a Sunday league and you played every, every you, there was a rhythm to it. You played on mm-hmm. Sunday and the week mm-hmm. you spent preparing, healing up, preparing, game planning, practicing, and you played the next Sunday. And then you had seven more days and you played the next Sunday. And there was a real true rhythm to the season. Well, that's no longer true. You know, you've got Sunday games, but you got Sunday night games, and then you've got Monday games, and now you got Thursday games, and sometimes you have Saturday games, and um, and the, it's it's become more like an NBA schedule, mm. which um, you're going to have these crazy periods like the Eagles had of just two games in 28 days, and I do think that there is an effect. I think there's a price to be paid for that, and you saw mm-hmm. a, little, a little bit of that on on Monday night. But now I'm going to be kind of curious for that reason. Okay, now you're back on rhythm. You know, now you got, okay, now you got to play. It's a short week, but still you're playing on Sunday. I expect them to bounce back in a big way on Sunday. Maybe I'll be wrong, but, you know, I have a feeling that with what happened on Monday night uh, and with a good solid week of practice this week, I expect them to go out and pretty much have their way with the Colts. So, so Ray, um, it's obvious over the last five games, the, the, the run defense has been their kryptonite. Mm-hmm. Your thoughts on them going out and getting two names who were prominent names in their heyday, but what do they still have left in the tank in Linville Joseph and, and Dominic Sue? We'll find out. You know, I mean, I, I, um, I think that they needed something. Mm-hmm. You know, they needed they needed reinforcements in the interior of the defensive line. You know. You can't ask Fletcher Cox to play 70 snaps a game anymore. No. Yes, you, exactly. You, you just can't. Um, you cut that in half, you know, and, and and I think that's probably what they're trying to do by bringing in Joseph and Sue. You figure, okay, you know, we could, Fletcher can play 35 snaps now, and he'll be a much better player for it. Yep. Uh, Hargrave, who's still a really good player and has continued to play well, still, I mean, he was pushing 70 snaps on yeah. Monday. And even for him, that's too much. So, I mean, we really are in the era of the rotating tackles. You need them. you got to have them, especially when you have a guy uh, who's as up in years as Fletcher is. And now, look, I don't expect Joseph to play like a first-round draft pick anymore. And I don't expect Ndamuk and Sue to necessarily come in and play like the guy he was when he came out of Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if they just come in and give you 20 to 25 good snaps, which I think they're probably still capable of, you know, this defense will be better for it. And remember, they only have to hold the fort for a while, and you're going to get Jordan Davis back at some yep. point. Yep. So, you know, down the road when you're playing the Giants and you've got the rematch with the Cowboys and some of those games, you know, I think you'll, they'll, they'll have the oomph in the middle that they need to have and they didn't have on Monday night. Okay. Ray, where, where do you stand with, with Jonathan Gannon? You know, he's a, he's a polarizing guy in the city, um, despite the fact that the team's 8-1. and one. And after this week, you know, a lot of people pouncing. Um, you know, and it was not certainly neither. I don't think either side of the ball or special teams covered themselves in glory in that game no. against Washington. Uh, but but where do you stand with uh, with Gannon? Uh, I still I still see him as a guy who coaches from the back to the front. You know, he's he's a defensive backfield guy, uh, and he's always going to want to protect his secondary, and he's always going to be thinking take away the big play. Uh, and if you're getting pressure from your front four, okay, you can play that way. Yeah. Uh, and if your run defense is holding up, and you don't have to bring out other safety down, okay, you know you can you can play that way. But if you ain't got that other component, then you got to find other ways to play. And to me, he's just—I think he is by nature a passive coach, uh, and uh, I think he is by nature a conservative coach, uh, and. Um, there's some things that I think I there's some things I think you just have to do in this league to to keep defense to keep offenses off balance and and he just doesn't do it enough to, to suit me. Um, they are especially on the edges of their defense. They're small. Yep. You know, they're undersized. They just are. Yeah. Uh, and yet 
does he loop those guys? Does he stunt those guys? Does he slant those guys to get them better angles? No. I mean, I think when you have when you have a smallish front, which the Eagles kind of do, uh, then you got to do more games with those guys to make it harder for the blockers to find them. Yep. You have a smallish front, and you're just going to line up and get play a body on a body against the offensive lines in the NFL. <laughs> well, guess what? They're going to drive you off the ball. Mm. If they want to run the ball, they're going to move you because they're just bigger than you. Right. Okay, if you're a defensive coordinator, you got to figure out something to do with those guys up front to make it harder for the blockers to get their blocks. I didn't see any of that. Mm-hmm. I didn't see any of that. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, that's on the coordinator, and that's on the guys in the booth. I mean, if I'm seeing it, they should certainly see it. Um, and it was there, I mean, right from the jump on, on Monday night. I mean, Washington, they didn't do anything fancy on offense. No. And in terms of their personnel – that won the hogs out there, okay? You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know Russ Grimm wasn't out there. Wasn't they, Russ Grimm they, and Joe Jacoby, hey, unless, unless I was mistaken, I didn't see any of them. They were the piglets. They weren't the hogs. They were the piglets. <laughs> no kidding. You know, yeah. I mean, and uh, but but the way they ran the ball, you would have thought they were right. Um, and to me, look, credit to them. I think that um, you know, I think uh, Scott Turner. Uh, to me, Scott Turner way out coached Jonathan Gannon in that game. I think Scott Turner came in with a really, really good game plan. Uh, and this is the way we're going to play. And I think to a large degree, Jonathan Gannon allowed him to play it. Mm-hmm. You, you, you hit me up with two things that I'm, I, I loved with the, uh, I love they're not the hogs out there, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you said Jonathan Gannon coaches from the backside in to the front. I, yeah. Well, the front side, I, I, I never, I never thought of it that way, but you're absolutely right. He's not putting as, as much earnest on the those guys up front really making plays. And that to me, that's 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 kind of mind-boggling to me, considering the fact we're in Philly and we always go with the trenches. But you know, I, I'm 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 tired of talking about Gannon right now. You know, I'll I'll talk about him enough, you know, come uh Sunday. But I'm looking at the offensive side of the ball and are we going to get back to Jalen Hurts being Jalen Hurts and playing a, a, a Jalen Hurts type of game and calling games in which his intangibles are back into play as, as opposed to them being out of play? kind of think you have to. Um, I mean, they – I thought they had a really good offensive design coming into this year. Um, I was really impressed with the stuff that uh, Sirianni and Stacken had put together in the offense. Um they, um, I, one of the things that jumped out at me was that the way they designed the passing game. They designed the passing game the way coaches should around the strengths of your quarterback. Yes. Uh, and you look at, you know, Jalen Hurts' jump up to almost a 70% completion passer was largely a function of the throws they asked him to make. I mean, he, in every course of every game, you're going to have to make a couple tough throws. That's just the NFL. But not every throw has got to be a tough throw. And you look at how many really easy completions he had, and they were by design. You know, I mean, he was always throwing the ball to somebody who was open. You know, either Turner coming on, either uh, either Brown coming on doing a turn out to the sideline, or Goddard on a screen, or um, or Brown uh, on a slant, a dig. Um, there was always a design that somebody was clearing out, somebody was coming in. Right, right. And, and and Hertz had the choice, you know, is it flat? Is it screen? Is it inside? Is it outside? And he always had the choice and there was always somebody open and mm-hmm. give him credit. I mean, he always seemed to make the right choice and those kind of throws he can make. And he was making them at a high efficiency rate. Um, it's going to be harder to do now without Goddard. I mean, losing that weapon. And I mean, he was. um he was really good. Yeah. He, uh, I mean, when you look at the tight ends in the NFL right now, and there are a lot of good ones, um, in terms of playing the complete game, uh, being able to run routes, being able to get yards after the catch, being sure-handed, and then being able to block on top of it. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I, I think he's one of the top three tight ends in football right now. Wow. I mean, I, I really think he's – I think he's really right in that company. So you take him out of the offense – that's a big loss. I mean, Stoll will be okay. You know, Stoll will catch the ball for you, and then he'll be a willing blocker. But he's not going to get you the yards per catch, and he's not going to get you the yards after the catch 
that Goddard did. So that's going to be a challenge for the coaches to figure out how do we work around that part of it. And also be able to run your offense without losing track of Miles Sanders. Mm. Oh, that was – You know, that's – I mean, you, you watch him carry the ball. I mean, per carry, he's really good. I mean, around the league, I mean, he's, he's a legit and has been for his career a five-yard per carry guy. That's what he is. Um, the only problems he's had in his career is staying healthy, but he's healthy yeah. now. And if he's healthy and he's running the ball the way he's running the ball now, you know, he's got to be equal partners in that offense. And I think sometimes the play in the play calling, they lose track of that. Ray, I'm glad you brought up Miles Sanders, because if you look early on in his career, he was a prominent fixture in the passing game. Also, all of a sudden, the last couple of years, it's like they've neglected him in the passing game. Why do you think that is? Um, well, if you recall, when he first came out his first year or two, Frankly, I was surprised he caught the ball as well as he did. Okay. I, I didn't think he was that good a receiver. Uh, and so the catches that he made and the plays he made in the passing game to me were almost a pleasant surprise. Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, he's better than I thought he was. Yeah. And then if you remember last year, he had his problems. You know, he, last year he wasn't catching the ball nearly as well. He had some costly drops. Uh, and I think the coaches, without even realizing it, I think they just kind of like decided they kind of lost – confidence in him and they got away from him in the passing game uh which i think you can't afford to do i mean the guy has shown you in the past that he can contribute there uh and he should be allowed to contribute there i mean as good a runner as he is um you know i i think half a dozen times a game you got to try and get him the ball in some kind of space and yeah. let him make a play he's already demonstrated in his first and second year he could do that Last year, yeah, he had some problems in that area, but I think you got to go back to it. Because hmm. to That's me, he's, he's, I mean, offense in today's NFL, it's all about playmakers. Yep. I mean, you have your role guys, you have your support guys, and then you have your guys that are game breakers, guys that can take the ball and just with their own individual skill make a big, big play for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and those are the guys that you have to design in, in your game plan that we got to listen, we got to get him the ball, we got to get him the ball. Uh, and when you're counting it up, is A.J. Brown one of those guys? Sure is. You know, is, is Deontay Smith? I'll put him in that category. But Miles Sanders <laughs> would be there, too. Mm. Do you see um, Do you see the the offensive line? Um, did, did they have a kink in their armor? You know, I watched the, the second half, and when I broke down the second half, I didn't see the same um, – I didn't see the same offensive line as I saw before. I, I saw my two guards getting beat a little bit, you know, more so than I've seen before. Um, is there a kink in armor? Can they pass block? They um, they didn't play well Monday. I'm with you there. Uh, I'm willing to I, I'm I'm willing to write it off as a bad night at the office. Okay. I think they're better than that. Uh, but Dickerson. Uh, Dickerson had a couple flat out whiffs. Yes. I mean, just flat out whiffed. And I hadn't seen that before. Um, and at least one of them led to a big play, a big, big Washington defensive play, clearly because your left guard got beat on the snap. That's unusual. Um, you know, Sayamalo's, I, I don't think, I don't think Sayamalo's a great player, but he's pretty consistent. Um, but he, he had a bad game. Yeah, um, I I think you're right in saying it was it was more the two guards. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, I will I will grant you this that Jonathan Allen's a challenge. <laughs> right, 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 right. He, he's a good player, very good player, uh, and um, and he's he's really a good player. Uh, he was a good player coming out of college. Uh, he's he's now I think really kind of hitting his stride as an NFL player, and so you knew that was not going to be an easy matchup. But you probably – I was a little disappointed. I thought the Eagles would be able to play him better than they did. Right. Looking at the NFC picture here, you know, you have the Eagles at 8-1. and one. We know they beat the Vikings head-to-head, -head, but that was a long time ago. The Vikings have, have been on quite a run here, seven straight. Uh, you know, you can throw a lot of other teams in there. The Giants at 7-2, and two, perhaps the biggest surprise. Seattle at 6-4. and four. We talk a lot about San Francisco, 5-4, and four, but a team that feels like they're on the come a little bit here. You don't want to bury Tampa. Who are the threats here in your estimation? One of the things that surprised me about this season uh, is, is the strength of the NFC East. Yeah. Uh, I mean, coming in this year, 
I kind of thought it was going to be the same old NFC <laughs> East, you know. <laughs> I thought it was going to be the Eagles and everybody else, mm-hmm. you know. And to this point, the Eagles were in first place, but I didn't think that had these other guys breathing down their neck the way they are. Yes. So that, that's a surprise to me. The Giants are um, – they're better than I thought they were going to be. Um, I mean, I don't know that they're as good as maybe their record would tell you they are. I mean, they've won a lot of close games. They've been a little lucky in some spots. Um, but what what the Giants show to me is just the value of good coaching. Yep. Uh, I mean, the Giants have been for a lot of years a not very well coached team. Uh, that they were a team that most Sundays would beat themselves, you know, by doing something really stupid. Uh, they're not doing that anymore. Uh, and, and if the Giants are, are close with you in the fourth quarter, they're finding ways to win now, yep. you know, and that's really all about coaching. And, and Dable is a, is a good coach. Yep. Uh, I mean, if you, I mean, a lot of this, look, Josh Allen is a, is a talented kid, really got tremendous gifts, but Dable did a tremendous job of molding him into an NFL quarterback. I mean, the, the kid that came out of Wyoming was, uh, he was a wild stallion. And you, I mean, you didn't know where he was going to throw the ball. I mean, he was he was a less disciplined Brett Favre coming out of college, right. uh, and and Dable molded him into an NFL quarterback. Uh, and so when the Giants hired him, uh, I felt like for the first time in a long time, they had a guy who could coach, and the team is showing that. Um, and the Cowboys have, have always had talent, but they've always found a way of screwing it up. Uh, <laughs> but this year, you know, they're six and three, so. Yeah, the Eagles are still got the inside track, but it's going to be it's not going to be easy, you know, because you look at the schedule that remains. Um, I think we all agree. What's the Eagles big weakness right now? It's run defense. Yep. I mean, it's, and Washington put that game plan out there for the whole world to see on Monday night. Mm-hmm. And you look at you look at what you got coming down the road. You, I mean, you got Derrick Henry. You got Saquon Barkley twice. You got. You know, you got Zeke and Pollard down in Dallas. I mean, you you got Jonathan Taylor this week, yep. and Jonathan Taylor this week, and, and you got Alvin Kamara. And so, Chicago will throw yeah. a lot of guys at you. Yeah. So you've got a lot of teams coming up that not only can run the football but want to run the football. Yep. And so as a as a as a defense, now you got to figure out a way to 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 stop that and not let a team just control the clock and control the ball and control the line of scrimmage the way Washington did on Monday night. How Ray, what did you make of the, the Jeff Saturday hiring? I, <laughs> I like Jeff Saturday. I like Jeff Saturday. I, I, I thought he was a terrific player. You know what's, what's really funny was when um, Jason Kelsey got drafted and he came to training camp. My first thought, the first time I saw him was, hey, this guy looks like Jeff Saturday. Right. <laughs> now, honest to God, the first you No, know, Ray, he said he, he 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 modeled a lot of his game after it. He talked about I, it yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I know. When I, when I interviewed him at training camp, and this is when he was a sixth-round draft pick rookie, and nobody even knew who he was. Mm-hmm. I mean, nobody even nobody thought he was going to beat out Jamal Jackson. No. I, I, no. I was a little pissed yeah. off when it happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean Jamal was a, Jamal was a good player mm-hmm. and was a veteran, and you know you figured you draft this kid and okay maybe he makes the team, but you never think he's going to win the job, but he did, and now he becomes you know one of the best offensive linemen in the history of the franchise. But before I knew anything about him, when he first walked on the practice field and I first saw him, my first thought was, damn, that guy looks like Jeff Saturday. <laughs> uh, which if, I mean, if I thought if he became that, that's good because Jeff Saturday was a really good player. And I, I think he's a really good analyst. I loved him on ESPN. Uh, but just, I mean, really? I mean, head coach in the NFL? Uh, I, I, and this is, this, this, I'm no mean trying to put down Jeff Saturday by saying this, but I thought it was absurd. Mm-hmm. I, I thought it was just simply absurd. Uh, now, wait do you see. Now, having said that, he's probably going to run the table. And the, <laughs> but but I, I, I just thought that it's. I just thought that it was absurd. I thought it was a slap in the face to guys who are coaches, yes, uh, and would would die would die for that opportunity. Um, but it just it's just a reflection of just kind of how upside down that whole Indianapolis franchise is right now. Um, it's um, they got some they got some real issues there, and they go all the way to the top. I think. Uh-huh. So winnable game, you think? You think I, you said earlier you think the Eagles bounce back and play well. Is this a game they take care of business, Ray, and, and win on the road? I think so. Yeah. 
I mean, I, I think so. And I, I don't want um, I don't want it to make it sound like I think the Colts are, are, are an absolute pushover, because if you look at the stats, their, their defense is pretty good. Yep. Their defense has kept them in some games longer than they have any right to stay in the games, given how bad their offense has been without Jonathan Taylor. But if you saw Jonathan Taylor last week, he looked like he's kind of back to health. Yeah. And um, and when he's healthy and he's running, he's he's a, he's a game changer. He really mm-hmm. is. So I, I don't by any means think it's it's going to be easy or that Indianapolis is a pushover. But I don't expect there's going to be a tremendous home field advantage. I suspect it's going to be a typical Eagles road game. It's going to sound like an Eagles home game. I expect that. Uh, And a lot of it's going to come down to not letting Jonathan Taylor take the game over and then finding a way. I'm assuming Matt Ryan's going to be the quarterback, getting pressure on the immobile quarterback, Mm -hmm. forcing him into some mistakes. And I think the Eagles are going to kind of get back to their style of offense, which if they're running it the right way, losing Goddard is going to hurt them. But I still think they're going to be able to move the ball and make plays. I, yep. you know, I think this is a game where, again, I would be I would be surprised if this was an edge of the seat kind of game in the fourth quarter. I think this is a game where the Eagles come out fast and get a lead at halftime and ride it the rest of the way. Okay. Okay. All right. And lastly, thing you miss most, thing you miss least about having to to grind it out every day now that you're in retirement. What, dealing with us? Other than dealing with us, which is the obvious. <laughs> no, hey, come on. That's a pleasure. I I, 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 I enjoy talking to you guys. I, mean, I, I love this. I, and, I mean, it's been, as I said, it's been busier mm-hmm. than I thought it was going to be. I mean, I, I really kind of envisioned a more of a Johnny Carson kind of retirement where I just kind of go away and <laughs> go play tennis in, in Malibu somewhere. Never see. Yeah. Again. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and they're up, up at the, uh, you know, at Wimbledon, look who's in the crowd. It's Ray and Maria. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not going to cut her to watch the world cup, right? Shocking. <laughs> I, kind of, I kind of thought that that might be more of it, but, yeah. um, but it's been fine. I mean, a lot of it really has been, um, as I said to you guys at the very beginning, it's been, um, there's been so much, stuff happening in Philadelphia. I mean, with the Phillies going to the World Series, the Eagles being undefeated, there's just a lot to talk about. And, uh, you know, if people want to, the people want me to come on the show and talk about it, I'm happy to do it. I mean, if the, if this had been, if things had played out the way I think most of us thought they would play out, the Phillies not even making the postseason, you know, and the Eagles being pretty good, but not like the last undefeated team, then I think I probably wouldn't have been quite as busy. Right. But uh, the way things. Oh, yes, you would have. <laughs> well, you may be right about that. But let's just, <laughs> let's just say, for the sake of argument, <laughs> then, it, then it probably would have been a more typical retirement. But uh, but it's been, it, it's, real, it's really been a lot of fun. I, yeah, last month I tried did, to get you to come back. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that, that's under discussion. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm trying. I'm uh, trying. But, uh, you know, I mean, there are some things I really wanted to do. Um, uh, I mean, I didn't just I didn't just pull this decision out of thin yeah. air. I mean, there, I really did. There were some things I wanted to do. Uh, my granddaughter was was a senior in college and was in her last year of field hockey. Uh, and I really wanted to go see as many of her games as I could. Uh, and so I got to do that. Uh, and my two grandsons, uh, this was going to, this was going to be their first year of organized football. You know, putting on the pads and the helmet and playing organized football. And they were playing every Saturday. And, you know, as much as I love doing our show on Saturday with me and Glenn, if I was on the radio with Glenn, I wouldn't have been watching my grandsons play football, you know. And so that's the kind of stuff that those are the times in your life that you can't get back. You know, you have to you have to enjoy them while they're there. That's right. Uh, And so I've I've had that opportunity. And uh, and I I. I can't tell you, I can't tell you how much of a kick I got out of going to my grandson's games and seeing them playing football for the first time. That was, <laughs> that was such a kick. I, yeah. I really, I really, really enjoyed that. I remember after the, the first scrimmage, my nine-year-old grandson, uh, George, came over to me and he was playing for the Drexel Hill Raiders. Oh, yeah. And uh, and they got uh, they got it handed to them by Springfield. Uh-oh. Uh oh. So uh, after it's over, and this is of course like the end of August, so it's like a hundred degrees, right? So George comes off the field and he takes off his helmet and his hair's all matted down, <laughs> and he says, "Pop, we lost." <laughs> and I said, 
George, one of the things you got to understand, nobody loses a scrimmage, okay? This was a scrimmage. There's no winners. There's no losers. You just learn and you move on. See? That's a good grandfatherly thing to say, right? I mean, absolutely. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Was, yeah. I mean, I hadn't rehearsed it. Did but George it was, buy it? Was he buying it? Right. Is the question. Yeah. 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 He kind of okay. did. At least I think he did. And then, okay. you know, and then I gave him a candy bar and he was really happy. <laughs> <laughs> but these, you know, but again, these are the little things that um, I could have missed, you know, if I was working. And uh, so it's that to be able to share that kind of time with my family and enjoy my family has been has been really wonderful. And then be able to watch the Eagles and Phillies win too. I mean, so much the better. Very well, I'm going to say is this. Come on now, George, you're taking my candy bar. I had them on Sundays. <laughs> now I don't have them on Sundays now. <laughs> That's what he used to do to pacify Barrett. He'd give him candy bars. Nice. Right. Yeah. You mean you don't miss staying up until 2 in the morning talking football on a post-game uh. show? <laughs> Ray, there are so many night games, man. So many night games. Oh, uh, Oh, it's it's it, it, it's really true. Uh, it, it's really true. Um, people ask me all the time, you know, do I miss it? You know, do I miss doing shows with you guys? Yeah. You know, do I do I miss doing Eagles pre and post with Barrett and Michael and Seth? Um, do I miss doing the radio? Yeah, 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 I do. Sure, I do. Uh, because um, it was ne- it was never a job for me. Right. You know, it was it was fun. You know, I, I never felt like I was punching a clock or, you know, or or, or even working. I was I was having fun. Yeah. So to not do it anymore. Yeah, I miss it for sure. Yeah, but well, uh, the other stuff is stuff I really wanted to do. And uh, and I've been able to do it. And it's been it's really, really been a lot. of It's been great. Nice. Well, that's we miss awesome, you man. for sure. We We're you, glad man. we still get a chance to talk to you, Ray. And that, we don't get any sure. more free food, man. No free food for post pre and post game show anymore, man. I'm starving up there now. Bro. I do. I don't. <laughs> I heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> you should. That, that that should not be. I mean, that's got to be a violation of some kind of rule, doesn't it? It I mean, is. Yeah. I mean, they, they they have us there from ten o'clock in the morning till ten o'clock at night. I mean, you guys. <laughs> <sleep, people, laughs> I mean, that's like. It's like you're working in a penal colony or something. Right. <laughs> you would have nope. Ray Lee. No comment. Yeah, exactly. Hey, right, right. So now that now that you get to watch games from the the luxury of your home, what's your go to foods on game day? Oh, um, my wife doesn't let me eat outside the kitchen. <laughs> I I. I can't take I can't take the food into or the television. Wow. Are you serious? Yeah, I mean, I I get this, but that's about it. All right. Well, then, do you run in there during a you know a timeout or something? Like, what's the move if you if you got a little little hunger hunger pain? Uh, nah, no, no, nothing. No, okay. I can't do it. Can't. Doesn't she know you Ray Dinger? I'm, I'm lucky I get this. Yeah, right. <laughs> Does, doesn't she know you Ray Dinger, Hall of Famer? <laughs> she she doesn't seem impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, awesome man awesome catching up with you and uh hopefully we'll do it sooner rather than later but continue to enjoy your time doing what you want yes. to do man yes. thank you hey it's it it's it's always a pleasure i enjoy being with you guys and uh you know i think that's i know this has uh, been a little bit of a tough week and a little bit of a downer because uh monday night didn't play out the way most people thought it was going to play out but uh you know, I still look at this team and I still look at the road ahead and I still think that they could accomplish great things, you know, and if they, mm-hmm. if they can somehow get to the, get the number one seed in the NFC and get that by and get the two home games, we could still see them in February. I still believe yeah. that's a possibility. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank I you, appreciate Ray. it. And enjoy your weekend, man. Thank Take you, care, man. guys. Have All right. Really enjoyed it. You got it. That is the great Ray Dinger, man. What, what a, what wow. a trip. What a trip. Hey, hey Barry. Like. Barrett, your, your guy in the Colts, uh, Kuwaiti Pay, Colts yeah, just announced he's out. Yeah, it's he's a big out one. Sunday. That's a huge loss. That's yeah. huge. He's yeah, second in QB sacks for that team. Yeah, he, he um, he's their best player as far as overall. He yeah. does everything well, man. I, I remember he coming out of um, Michigan. He does everything yep. well. Yeah, everything well. So a little undersized, but he's you know. Everybody's going to them smaller, undersized guys yeah, yeah. now. Yeah, they are. You know, I mean, the Eagles have a bunch of them. Um, you look at uh, defense alignment up in with the Bills. What's his name with the Bills? Ed Oliver. No. Ed, yeah, Oliver. Yeah, Ed, Ed Oliver. Oliver. Yeah, Houston. Yeah. yeah. Small guy, you know, but everybody's going to him now. Well, if you, everybody... look at, 
you look at the Steelers. The Steelers made that the trend now in terms of going with smaller linebackers, smaller edge rushers. Yep, yep. You know, you I know. can remember when I first got in the league, everybody had like Big Ted Williams and all oh, those yeah. kind of guys. Oh, yeah. You know, Jerry Ball. Yeah. They were like the, you know what I'm saying, root hall guys. And, you know what I'm saying, you had the grave digger, you know, Big Gilbert Brown. Well, what about, what's his name for uh, New England? He went down and finished his career in Houston, uh, the nose tackle. Wilf. Oh, yeah, uh, to be Ted Wilf, Washington. Wilf, no, no. W- or Vince Wilf, 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 yeah. Vince Wolf. I mean, that dude was yeah. like 360. Yeah, mm-hmm. Vince Wolf. You, know. you had Saragusa. Saragusa, yeah. 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 The grave digger. That's right, Gilbert Brown. My boy hey. Casey Hampton. Yeah. Casey uh, Hampton. Yep, yep. Hey, Sue expressed eagerness to play on Sunday. Now, whether okay. that happens or not, you know, we'll he, see. He but also he, said his mom's not happy he's playing. Yeah, he said, but he wants another ring. Yeah. So he, he's ring chasing. He's made all the money in the world. He Woo! said he wants a ring. I like it. I'm oh, oh, like sorry, it. Yoki. I'm oh, sorry, Yoki. I, I just, John, John Dickerson oh, says Robbie is the undersized guy for sports take. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's hard to argue. Yeah, but I'm a speed guy off the line. You know what I mean? I, just, I got quickness. Yeah, he's a it. speed. He's a speed edge rusher. That's right. That's how I roll. All right, we'll come back. Um, we will. Uh, we'll dig a little bit more into the Eagles. We get, I want to hit a couple things with Barrett uh, from b- before he got here. I know it, it was a little bit more in depth, but we'll talk about the uh, predictability fear <clears throat> between Stoll and and Calcaterra, who's in there, and how you make that work. So we'll dig into that. Uh, we're going to look at Week 11, the big matchups, guys. The key matchups, some games, one in particular, the Cowboys and the Vikings that we're going to have a very close Ooh. eye on. We'll do that. Uh, AL and NL MVPs came out. I'll tell you where JT Real Muto landed uh, in the voting um, and a bunch of other stuff. Two o'clock, full-blown NFL, uh, including our NFL power rankings and coach of the year rankings so far. Wait, we're doing coach of the year rankings? What? <laughs> yes. Where did you, you throw that at us? Where, where did you get meeting. that memo? What? Were you hey, there I'm, during our meeting? Yes, I was there. Do you remember this conversation, Barrett? I honestly do. Thank you. Wait, wait. If Barrett remembered, I know I messed up. I, oh, we no, talked he, about he, it. Remember we, we you, you even responded to it. Like, because we said, we said that Nick Sirianni is probably out of it right now because yeah. the expectation was already there. Oh, yeah. And I, put, and I threw Robert Salad. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. that's right. Yeah, you just tuned me out, actually. That's all. <laughs> no, no. Thanks, man. You sound like my wife now. I, I you don't that. listen. Now I know, you I know what Trish goes through now. So we She can... tells me that all the time. You don't listen. I wish you would listen to me. I'm I do old. listen. And just for that, I'm going to have her ban you eating anywhere but the kitchen, too. Right. You're not allowed to yeah. eat in your living room now. That's okay, because I have seven different rooms I can go to to watch a game. <laughs> I'll take one of my kids' I'm, rooms if I'm I have telling to. telling Trish that that's the case. All right, so we'll take a quick time out. We'll come back. Uh, a lot of NFL in store for you. We'll give our predictions at 2.30. Dan Coop from Sport Trade. So we'll get some uh, some lines and get some uh, – some games that he likes, some teams he likes as well. We'll do all that stuff uh, when we get back. Don't go anywhere. We are Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network, Derek Barrett, and Rob. Let's talk about Flynn Tree Services. Flynn Tree Services is an experienced, licensed, and insured Pennsylvania tree services company that will trim or remove any unwanted trees off of your property. They offer cost-effective solutions to any tree problems that you may face. So do you have any types of issues with any trees on your property or in your yard? If you do, They're just a quick phone call away, and they're experts at trimming all types of trees and serve southeastern Pennsylvania, South Jersey, and northern Delaware. Flynn Tree Services specializes in tree removal, stump grinding, as well as tree pruning. Keep in mind, we're in that time of year now with hurricanes and some storms and some wind. Now's a great time to have your trees evaluated. Go to their Facebook or Instagram page for more information or a sampling of their work. Give Flynn Tree Services a call today, 610-850-2800. 610-850-2848 or online at flintreeservices.com. That's flintreeservices.com. Don't wait until after Thanksgiving for leftovers. If-